Hello everybody, today we're going to look at something that's a pretty famous physics thought experiment. It's called the monkey gun or the, the monkey and the hunter, depending on how you've heard of it. There are lots of simulations that show this, and I just want to say that up front. I might have time to show you one myself here. But what we're going to do in this video is we're going to actually go through some of the math and show a little bit of a proof, we'll call it for how the monkey gun thought experiment works. So if you're not familiar with it, the way the story goes is that you have a hunter that's sitting over here somewhere. And the hunter is trying to hunt this monkey that's up here hanging on a branch. The monkey has a trick. Every time somebody tries to hunt it, it watches for a flash of light from the barrel of the gun. As soon as it sees a flash of light, it lets go of this tree branch that it's hanging off of and it falls to the ground. But there's a new hunter in town. This hunter knows this monkey's trick. So the hunter is trying to anticipate the issue here. The hunter knows that as soon as it presses the trigger here, that the monkey is going to fall. And the question is, where should the hunter aim? The mathematics tells us that the hunter should actually aim directly at the monkey right up here. If the hunter aims too high above the monkey, obviously that wouldn't work. The bullet would go above the monkey. Often, it seems like it would make sense that the hunter should aim lower and try to anticipate the idea that the monkey is going to fall. But it turns out that if you aim too low, you're going to end up shooting the bullet below the monkey. And that's where the mathematics comes in. No matter what, you should aim at the monkey. What's really cool is that the muzzle velocity doesn't matter. So let's take a look at the mathematics here. While I still have this little pseudo triangle drawn up, there's some important information that we might want to draw. First and foremost, I'm going to use blue here to perhaps signify the monkey. We're going to say this is Y naught, meaning the initial height of the monkey. There's also an important coordinate over here, which is how far away the monkey is. I'm going to call this DX. That's how far the hunter is from the monkey. And then there's some sort of angle here, theta, that I've already defined. That's a displacement triangle, so I can deal with vectors that deal with meters or some other length measurement. But I would need to come over and also think about the velocity that the bullet leaves the hunter's gun. And so I'd have to draw a separate triangle. It would be a similar triangle as far as its proportions are concerned. And it's going to have some initial velocity. We can talk about the components of the velocity for this particular trajectory for the bullet. And we would say that V initial in the X is actually equal to whatever VI is times cosine of theta. And then likewise, I have a V initial in the Y is going to be equal to whatever the hypotenuse is, VI, times sine theta. And with that, I'm ready to set up some functions. The general function for dy, the height of an object as a function of time, is going to be one half the acceleration times time squared plus v initial in the y times time plus whatever the initial launch height is, d initial in the y. That's a general equation, and I'll be able to write one out for both the bullet and the monkey. So that's where we have to start. I need my functions now. I need my y direction for the bullet and the monkey. Over here, I'm going to do uh, B for bullet in black, and I'm going to say dy of the bullet as a function of time is going to be equal to, let's say, one-half acceleration. Let's go ahead and call that negative 4.9. That's one-half of the negative 9.8 meters per second squared that I would have for acceleration. Negative 4.9 t squared plus the initial velocity times time. Well, the bullet, we had that written up here, vi sine theta. That's the initial y velocity. So plus vi sine theta, that quantity multiplied by time, plus the initial y location for the bullet. I have some ability to define my reference here. And I'm going to go ahead and make that bullet's initial height the reference location. So I'm going to say plus 0. That's nice because I'll go ahead and just get rid of it here so that I can simplify my equation. Now if I come over and write a similar function for my monkey, I find that dy, this monkey is just in free fall, for the monkey, 
as a function of time is going to be equal to the same negative 4.9 t squared. It's the same acceleration due to gravity. Plus, the v initial is zero for the monkey. So plus zero. I would have a time term in there, but since it's v initial and the y is zero, this all goes away. Plus d initial and the y. Remember, I defined that up here as y naught. And so I'm going to say y with a little zero, naught. Okay, I don't really want that zero in there. I kind of want these to be as clean as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this little spot and just say plus y naught. Now I'm going to come over and for the bullet, let's talk about the x direction. In the x direction, I'll write it up here. D in the x is going to be equal to V in the x times time. There's no acceleration up there. In the x direction, we're not including any wind resistance or anything like that, so I don't have an acceleration term. Basically, I'm left with just these two terms, except they're going to be in the x direction. Regardless, d x for the bullet as a function of time is going to be equal to the initial velocity in the x direction is the only velocity in the x direction it is written right here v i cosine theta that full quantity times time plus an initial location except that I'm going to make that a zero also so really both the reference locations in the x and the y are going to be this bullet that means I can come over here and write dx for the monkey as a function of time is a constant. It's just falling straight down. So this is going to be equal to this dx quantity that's going out here. So I'm just going to call it dx. So I got to get some board space here. Unfortunately, I got to get rid of my monkey. So now I have my function set up. I've got a function for the y and one for the x, both as a function of time for the bullet and for the monkey. Again, this is assuming that you are aiming at the monkey. That way the theta that was associated with this problem was the same for both the displacement triangle and the velocity triangle. So to really prove that these things are going to collide, I need certain things to be the same. I need time dx and dy to all have the same value at the same time. That's the only way I can truly prove that these things would always collide. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set the dy's equal to each other as a function of time. So that's going to look like this. First for the bullet, negative 4.9 t squared plus vi sine theta multiplied by time is going to be equal to now the monkey's function, negative 4.9 t squared plus y naught. This simplifies the process for me. You'll notice that that acceleration term was actually the same on both sides. And that's actually fundamentally what makes this whole thought experiment interesting. So those things go away and now you're left with the simplified version that vi sine theta times time is equal to y naught. This is a good start, but now what we have to do is we have to pull more information into this. I need to somehow talk about the dx. If you're with me on this, it is physically possible for both the bullet and the monkey to have the same height, but if they're located at different horizontal locations at that time, then they certainly haven't collided. So somehow we have to pull dx into all of this. So over here, the monkey is really easy. It's always located at dx. And so what I want to do is I need to come over here and start talking about the bullet when it's actually at dx. So instead of this generic function, I'm going to say, look, when this thing is at dx, the same horizontal location as the monkey, then I have this expression, vi cosine theta times time. And if this is going to work, then this time that's sitting here has to be super related to that time that's sitting up there. That's a requirement. So let's hang on to this for just a moment. And I want to go back up to the y direction. I want to manipulate this y naught. Let's get that thing out of there. Remember I had a triangle that looked like this. This was theta, this was dx, and this was y naught. Well, I can write down an expression that says tangent, so this is separate here, tangent 
of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is y naught over dx. So really, y naught can be written as dx times tan theta. So that's how I'm going to write it over here. So vi sine theta times time is equal to dx times tan theta. Okay, and I'm going to clear a little bit more board space over here because we're about ready for our very last step. If this is all truly equal, if all three of these requirements are truly happening, if everything is truly equal, I should be able to take the time information from the dx and I should be able to plug it in right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this thing for time and so it's going to look like this. Time is equal to dx divided by vi cosine theta. And now if I plug that in, like I was saying, if I plug that in up here, then the equation must still hold true. It must be equal. If I can't make it equal, then something is being violated. So maybe I'll even write this part in red so you can see all the different parts of it. So I'll come over here. So I'm just rewriting the black part here. Vi sine theta times time was dx over vi cosine theta is equal to, and then from the monkey side of things, we had this expression, dx tan theta. And if we come look at what we have, it's pretty cool. The vi cancels with this vi. That is the evidence that it doesn't matter what the initial velocity is of the bullet coming out it will still always hit the monkey. And then if you recall, there's a trig identity that says sine theta divided by cosine theta is actually equal to tangent. So you can see that this dx that's right here is actually being multiplied by tan theta because of that trig identity. And that is equal to dx times tan theta. So that's actually the proof. And while it may look like I really needed a lot of board space and a lot of time to do that, I was just trying to walk you through all of it, it's actually a pretty short little proof that is really just looking at writing the right functions for both the bullet and the monkey and making sure that this is happening. So you assume that you have to have the same time with the same dx and the same dy in all situations. And you start just condensing down your four equations getting rid of other variables until you get this final product that just says, hey, look, this has to be true. Well, that those things are always, always going to be equal to each other under these conditions. Hopefully that made sense to you. Uh, if it did, certainly let your computer know.